for everybody as them to have the treats the pooch and muck dentist stick <laughs> this video is all about this the all power r1500 which is a new unit from them and i want to talk about this and also that flexible 200 watt solar panel they do 100 watt and a 200 watt but i think that solar panel is excellent they're just over 200 pound and i'll put the price below for this because i just want to check it because i can't believe how cheap it is for a 1500 watt power unit and there may be some discount codes below so check the description to see if there's any offers on but that's ridiculously cheap at that price for a quality piece of kit and it's a lithium phosphate battery if you know anything about all powers we've tested many of those over the years and the there used to be uh, lithium iron batteries and there was a low cost great to use quite robust and we tested quite a few of them and i still use the small one i think it's a 500 watt one i've got and it gets used all over the place and it's been fantastic but they've really changed the design with this and they've really changed the quality of the build as well these cases are really well built you've got through charging on the top there for your phones 15 watts on both of those wireless charging you've got three sorry four th three pin sockets and you've got two usb a's and two usb c's they're at 18 watts they're at 100 watts and then the traditional 10 watt 12 volt socket I'm using this at the moment. It's actually plugged into a radiator. And I don't know if in your camper van that, you know, we have a diesel eater down there next door. Just the outlet for it is just next to the mucky towel we've used to clean the whippets off. <laughs> but that's great and it warms up really quick in here. But it's a dry heat and it's quite noisy as well. Not the clicking of the pump, that's not a problem. Just the blowing of the air. And what I find is if you have that diesel eater on overnight, it can dry you out because you, do, you don't have a lot of ventilation in here and if you have ventilation then you get the cold air in or you get a draft so what i tend to use is one of these cheap radiators and these are about 30 quid this one is a 300 watt radiator sorry 400 watt ra radiator i think you can get them at 300 watt and i get the van warm with a diesel heater on the night and i set this to about half temperature and that just gives enough heat to keep us warm in here overnight. And this one here, it's using 300 watts. So if this was fully charged, it'd probably last for about four hours. Um, obviously, it's not on all the time because the thermostat on these click on and off. But that's a real good way and a cheap way of keeping your van warm over a night. And it's a better type of heat. You can't beat a diesel heater, that's an EPOS battery in here, and it really warms this van up. But that does help, and a power unit like this is ideal for it. We also have curtains in here that are fitted recently, and they're really good. They just go across the cab. So All Powers have sent us this to review, and we've reviewed, as I say, quite a few All Powers in the past. But they've also sent us this new flexible solar panel which is 100% waterproof. You can sick a flex it onto the roof of your van, but I think that's quite a good way of using a portable one. You won't obviously get as much power as if you had it outside, but if you're leaving your van and you don't want to leave it outside where somebody can mess with it, it fits on your windscreen very nice. Park your van overnight facing east. As the sun comes up in the morning, it will defrost your windscreen, take out the condensation, and you'll start to get some power into that solar panel. And that'll start working, you don't even have to get out of bed. Don't know if you can see it there, but uh, if it's right across the, this is a VW Crafter Sprinter, sorry, VW Crafter, same as a Sprinter. And apart from the uh, condensation in my windscreen, it fits right across there. And obviously you could stand it up as well. And I reckon the angle of that is about right to get the most of the sun. We haven't got a lot of that today. It's their honeycomb technology. It's, you can get quite a bend in it. So if you have a motorhome with a curved front, you could stick some of these on with Sikaflex. It does come with these stainless rings in the side and some Velcro straps and clips. So you can actually strap this onto the side of the car, on your camper van or on the roof. 
or even vertically on the side. If you've got a roof rack, you could put it on the side, but it is 100% waterproof. So it can be left up there all the time. The standard con connectors on that, and, and these, a 200 watt one of these is just over 200 pound. And they do a 100 watt version of this, which is obviously smaller, which is just over 100 pound. But again, please check the description because they tell me the price and then they'll sell me information when the video goes live, which might be different. So I always tell people just to double check. You nosy and rosy. Again, all powers, the design of this is really good because you've got these flat sides here, but it has a cutaway inside to enable the airflow, the air to flow through the actual unit to keep it cool. And there's different settings on this as well. So when you're charging it, you can have it on a fast charge a slow charge or a quiet charge. And the quiet charge, I think it's at 400 watts, but it turns all the fans off. It doesn't need the fans on. So if it's in your camper van and you're on a hookup, um, you could charge it slowly at 400 watts and it'd be completely silent. And it's expandable. You can plug expandable batteries in the back, in the side there. Nothing on the back. So you can put this in the back of your camper van up against a wheel lurch or in a cupboard and you don't have to get to the back to plug anything in, which is a godsend. All power units should have a flat back on them like that, really. The handles, no silly handle on the top. That gets in the way. That takes up more room. You've just got these handles in here, which gives you that ventilation space we just talked about. And then on this side, another flap. And you have your kettle lead in there, so there's no charging brick. There's a reset button, so if it trips off, there's a reset. And this is where your car charger will go in, or your solar will go in. Simple display, say how much power it's using, how long it'll last. On and off button here, on and off for the AC, and for these ports here. This also switch this socket on as well. It's lovely and warm now. So I would turn that down now, probably about there and that would click on and off through the night. And the only thing you'll hear is that clicking on and off and this if the fan comes on, but the fan on this is very quiet. We'll just listen to the fan now. See if we can get it to come back on. That wouldn't put me off sleeping that, that's not bad at all. And this unit has quite a few safety features built into it to the battery management system. If it gets too hot, it'll switch off. If it gets too cold, it'll switch off. Too much power going in, in relation to volts or amps, it'll switch off and reset itself. So it's a super safe device as well. Honestly, all powers have really turned around these new units and produced something at a fantastic price. That is a great piece of kit. That solar panel, I know we look at folding solar panels but with a folding solar panel where the joints are you usually lose a piece of the actual panel area which makes it bigger and I know they fold up but they can be quite thick and they they'll still take probably about this much size of a, a 200 watt panel when it's folded up but with this being super thick it's not very thick at all you could slide this under your bed or in the boot of your garage, you could put some um, sliders in and actually slide it in there to store it. So it'd probably take up less room than it would a folding panel. But it's really good to see quality panels like this at not stupid prices. And of course, they're 100% waterproof. And many panels from lots of different companies are not waterproof, which have been a bugbear of mine. So it's great to see that they've made these 100% waterproof. The solar panel you get the solar panel connection leads to fit to the leads that are on the panel and the connector that will fit into this unit which is on the charging side at this side there you can get extensions for these and you can get these up to like 20 odd meters or you can have them made any size you want and then these velcro straps and these velcro straps are ideal because they fit into these stainless loops and you can strap them onto the roof rack or anything where you're going to use it. You could even peg it down onto the floor with tent pegs. But if you've got a boat and you want to use it on a boat, a yacht or a power boat, with this being 100% waterproof, you could put it out, strap it down, and then when you finish sailing and you're going home, you can put it away afterwards. With the R1500, you get your lead. We call those a kettle lead. And you get a charging lead for solar. 
There's no car charging lead in it. I don't know if that's a mistake with this one. This might be a pre-production one they've sent me. But it comes with a bag to keep your leads in. And what I mean by the car charging lead is one of these, what fits into a cigarette lighter. You can buy these, they're not expensive. But the as they come out on production and they're more available, you might find there's some of these in there. But it'd be worth a check. It will tell you on the website. It has an uninterrupted power supply. So I have this plugged in with its mains lead into my mains camper van supply. And then I have this radiator plugged into here. And if I switch, you can see there, there's 900 nod watts going in there and there's 378 coming out. But if you watch that, as I switch off my external, it'll automatically switch across. And the red light on the radiator hasn't gone off. So I'll do that again. Just waiting for it to come back on. There we go, it's starting to pick up the power from the external AC. There it is. So there's the external power going in. And if you look, the red light's on there. It's actually flickering on that, but that's the camera, not the actual light. And if I just switch this off, watch the red light, it doesn't go off at all, it stays on. So this switches over in milliseconds as an uninterrupted power supply. So if there's a device you have to run a piece of medical equipment or computer equipment, this is safe to use with that. It's got a good um, sine wave inverter inside and the quality of the inverter is good and it will be able to switch direct from mains going in to its own power supply so it wouldn't interrupt the use of that piece of equipment. I do have an app for this as well so if you want to put this in a cupboard out the way due to its design with having nothing on the back and these flat sides with the ventilation in and uh, no silly handle on the top you could fit it into a cupboard but you just need to give it a, probably an inch or so to enable some vert ventilation to get around the sides and maybe some holes in the box if it's really secured in but if you're going to fit it on the wheel arch of your camper van and plug things in it you can use it all remotely with the app that comes from all power in the cottage and i just want to test this on our off-grid system if you haven't seen our videos before this is a transfer switch this is mains power and you can switch it over to generator and there's a 13 amp plug that I can plug into a power supply and this tells how good the inverter is. So I'd like to do this test on all power packs of this size or bigger. And this actually goes up into our main fuse box and through the fuses so it can run everything that's on in the cottage at the moment. So we'll just plug it in and see how the inverter copes with it. So here we have it with a 13 amp plug put in. 30, uh, 60 amp cable in that, the unit's on, the sockets are on, here's our transfer switch, it's on mains, just switch that off and across the generator and there we go, there's not a lot running at the moment, we do have an electric arger but that's uh, not switched on at the moment, so that's just building up 150 odd watts and none of the fuses have clipped off in the fuse box it always proves that it's a good inverter and as these are sold as a backup power obviously you can just plug your things in separately but uh, having this system like this it just makes life a lot easier we obviously live in middle of nowhere and we get lots of power cuts so we use lots of power packs off grid hi everyone as part of this video we're going to give away the solar panel so if you want the solar panel then put you, uh, the words I want one in the comments of this video um, we'll choose someone at random you have to be a subscriber and you have to be in the UK we'll cover all the costs check out our future videos and we'll put in a slide to let you know who the winner is and we'll contact thanks for watching and check the information in the description below and uh, we'll see you on the next one those whippets don't look very enthusiastic do they well, they've just been out. Shall we put the outtakes in how many times it took you to do that? Mm. <laughs> the solar panel. <laughs> right. You need to be a subscriber. You have to be a subscriber. So if, you, if you'd if you like to put in the comments, I want one. Put your comment in the comments and we will message you. <laughs> Get rid of it.